This is our garden at the house. That's lettuce in that half barrel. That's grapevine on the fence. It's kind of annoying, it wraps around everything. And the grapes aren't even good. That's an olive tree. It did not do well in the freeze snow apocalypse that Texas had, but normally it does so good. And we were thinking about getting another one. Hopefully this one pulls through. Here's that lettuce again. And then this is a little Christmas tree. I had a second one. They're supposedly for our zone, but they do not like the heat. We had tomatoes in these half barrels last year, but they didn't do as well as the tomatoes we had under this solar shade that blocks out a good amount of the sun, but enough for everything to grow huge. And this is a view of most of our flower beds. These are my strawberries. Strawberries are peas. Usually I do sugar snap peas, but these are just regular sweet peas. And now I train them to go up this cattle panel arch. This bed will have squash in it. I got a different kind of squash. You'll see it this summer when I update you on the garden. It should go up this arch, but squash grows so fast. So I have to keep on top of training it up that arch. This bed is gonna have tomatoes in it in a second. I'm not sure what I'm putting there. This will be Derek's hot peppers for his salsa. This one has green beans in it. We have these lines up here for it to grow on. Cilantro right here, didn't make it through the freeze very well but it's always a good grower. And will probably be jalapenos, probably a couple plants and then some something else. <laughs> this is my asparagus. It is getting a little thicker this year. Last year they were thin, thin, but they are perennials. It takes two years, but you can buy a bare root that are supposedly two years old. I have butter crunch lettuce planted right there. We'll see how it does during the summer. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in this bed. The dogs can't come in because they walk in the beds. But I have green onions. Every time we buy green onions from the store, I save about, you know, an inch of the bottom with roots on it, just stick it in here and they grow back. I have beets growing in here, but when this tree gets leaves on it, this is extremely shady, so I don't know how well that'll come up. I have some vine plants. This jasmine didn't make it very well through the freeze, but it had blooms on it up to the freeze. I've tried carrots here and they didn't work out well. It's just not getting enough sun. So this is kale and lettuce. I had uh, radishes here and they did really well. Uh, more grapes here. And I usually put flowers in here. This used to be where a beehive was. So I had a lot of flowers for them. Here's my fertilizer. It's equal parts of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium. They're good for different parts of the plant. A rule of thumb is if the old people are buying it, just go ahead and buy it because they know what they're doing probably. I don't measure anything. There might be a measurement on the back. I just throw it out there and mix it in. Every time I put a new plant in there, I mix in more fertilizer. A week before this, my back went out, so I might be doing some weird lifts.
I run into toads a lot in these beds. They all are turned and fertilized. Except for this one because it has plants in it and seeds in it. This is right outside the door. I built this for soil retention because we live at the bottom of a hill. Anyway, I was using it for flowers and grasses. But two of them I have made into garden beds. This third one has flowers in it, but also mint. That's spearmint. I have potatoes in here. New potatoes. I've never tried growing potatoes, but they were sprouting. Here's that spearmint all along here, and that should take over pretty well. I have onion over here. These are Texas sweet onions. Then I have some sweet red onions. I have some shallots that probably won't make it, but whatever. And then this year we got leeks. And I have tons of leeks. I might plant some more because I've got this whole bed left. These are my maters. I have baby boomer hybrids which are cherry tomatoes and then i have bodacious tomatoes they're not supposed to split so that's why i wanted those these are the rest of the leeks and these are carolina reapers for derek's salsa no i'm not going to plant all of these but it pains me to throw seedlings away so i'm going to give them away to neighbors and family I start my seedlings inside and they get what's called stretch. At night time in the house is the same as during the day. We keep it at 70 in the winter time. Without the cool down at night, they just keep growing the whole day and they get stretched. If you bury them a little deeper, like probably right below this first set of leaves, it'll give it stronger roots and it'll have a little more support down there. So that's how far I'm going to bury these. Okay. There's the four of these. And now I'll get a tomato cage. You of course don't have to put the tomato cages on them at this point, but very soon they'll be huge and going over the sides of the rails and out of control. I need a couple more tomatoes along with the leeks that you can't really see. More leeks. And yesterday, I potted up my herbs. I decided they'd be in pots this year. These are actually petunias. These are calabracho, calabracha. I don't know, I love those. They're like miniature petunias. This is oregano, chives, parsley, no, dill, thyme, 
basil, I love basil, parsley, rosemary, that's a money plant, and kaipu, stop, sage. I also got a sweet broom weed. It's drought tolerant. It'll keep the chickens out of this box. It's a perennial. It's a great for pollinators. I believe it's a Texas native. When Derek says I can get more animals, I don't ask questions. I just get them. We got six more chickens. Our racing chicken is Mustang Sally. These blue rocks have feathers on their feet. Eating stickers. These are what would have been spring bees. They're emerging from their cells for the first time and they were just frozen in that freeze. So we lost hive number eight. Here's some of the equipment you need for beekeeping. This bottom section has a screen to allow for airflow in the summer and a board you can slide in for the winter time to keep them a little warmer. This is a deep brood box. It's where they're supposed to lay the brood. The inner cover is the cover that goes in the inside. Here's the lid that goes over the inner cover. Just for counting mites, if you have too many, you'll have to treat for them. This is a queen excluder. It keeps the queen from laying in the honey supers when you go to harvest. This is a one-way bee escape so that you can keep the bees out of the super when you go to harvest honey. Here's some other tools you'll need. Using smoke calms the bees down. Honey spinners spin the honey out of the frames. The honey bucket has a gate on it for easy pouring. The sieve catches all the caps that you have to cut off from the frames to get to the honey. Beautiful. All the new stuff is painted. And now, watch my bouncing baby goats. 